for a summary of the day's events, we take you to Morgan Beatty at NBC in Washington. This is Morgan Beatty in the NBC newsroom in Washington. For exactly 31 minutes, you have been hearing the beginning of VE Day in Europe and in America. It began at exactly 9 o'clock with a statement by President Harry S. Truman in the White House that he'd been notified by General Eisenhower from his headquarters in Paris that the forces of Germany had surrendered to the Allied nations. And then President Truman proclaimed Sunday, May the 13th, as a day of prayer for all people of this nation, whatever their faith, to give thanks and ask for the support of God to the end of the war. He also asked that we dedicate ourselves at this time to the memory of those who died. President Truman held a press conference before he went on the air to read to reporters and newsmen exactly what he was going to say 30 minutes later. And then came the report from Prime Minister Winston Churchill from Great Britain. The report that indicated great deal, a great many of the reasons why there have been delays in the last three or four days. Probably the most important of which was the fact that we insisted on a surrender by both a German government and the German military authorities. It was Prime Minister Churchill who gave us the report that the actual ceasefire order in this war started yesterday, but that the actual end of the war would not come until one minute past midnight tonight. And then came that dramatic report from W.W. W. Chaplin in Paris, an eyewitness, NBC's eyewitness, to the signing of the peace document in the headquarters of General Eisenhower at Reims. There again, W.W. W. Chaplin confirms that the insistence of the Allied powers on both a military and a governmental surrender has been the cause of much of the delay. There was an attempt on the part of Admiral Dönitz, the man who claims to be head of the German state, the successor to Adolf Hitler. There was apparently an attempt on his part to avoid a complete surrender. He didn't send a man with enough credentials at first, and finally he had to send his chief of staff of the German army, Gustav Jotel, as the Associated Press reported yesterday, and that man signed in the name of both the army and the civil government of Germany. The importance of that was indicated by Prime Minister Churchill when he told us that the important thing here was to outlaw all German military forces that may continue to fight after one minute past midnight tonight. In view of the fact that we have not heard in this last 31 minutes from Moscow, it would be indicated that Premier Stalin, Marshal Stalin of the Soviet Republics, is intending to wait until a Berlin surrender, uh, one that will follow the ceremony at Reims on yesterday and one that is supposed to come later today. Marshal Stalin apparently wishes to wait until the Berlin surrender occurs, and at that time, then he will go before the Russian people and tell them that the end of the war has come. He would prefer, apparently, to have the surrender come from the capital of the state that has been conquered by the Allied Nations. And thus it is that, as W.W. W. Chaplin told us, a war that has lasted five years and eight months came to an end in a ceremony at Reims in exactly four minutes. As a matter of fact, this story, so far as the American public goes, this story began a half hour before 9 o'clock, or at exactly 8.33 a.m. this morning, when the president received the press and radio in his offices. And now to continue the complete coverage of this momentous day in the history of our country, from NBC in New York, we take you to NBC in San Francisco for H.V. Kaltenborn. Come in, NBC in San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen, from the NBC newsroom in San Francisco, here's Mr. H.V. Kaltenborn. We have had too many wars in the United States. I myself have been a soldier, war correspondent, war editor, war commentator in three of them since 1898. And I do hope I shall not live to see a fourth. To me, the great thrill of this morning were the words of the President of the United States when he said that the flags of freedom are flying all over Europe. Yes, once again, freedom is more than a word in that great continent which has suffered so much from war and from oppression. 
and where again and again the close living peoples have warred against one another only for destruction, for attempted conquest, which, is in, which in the end has turned against them. And the nation that has led in that aggression over the last century is the great German nation, which inherited that miserable tradition of success and conquest through war from Frederick the Great, and which carried it on through Bismarck and the first Kaiser, and then the second Kaiser, and then another kind of cheap Kaiser, Adolf Hitler. Yes, Germany had three wars, and three times she was triumphant. And then came the defeat of 1914-18, and the Germans learned nothing from that. They had won too many victories. They had found too many excuses for their defeat. And so, when that mountebank Adolf Hitler came, and when as the piet piper of the post-war years, he led the German people once more into war, they felt once again that this time they would succeed. And once again, they have failed. And once again, they have had to sign the signal of defeat. What a scene that was, the W.W. Chaplin painted for us this morning in that schoolhouse of France near the historic city of Reims with the representative of the new German government and Yodel, who was so close to Hitler, signing unconditional surrender. And this time we saw to it that no future mountebank can deceive the German people as to just what happened, for it was complete unequivocal, absolute defeat of arms. And as a result of that, it's going to take a long, long time before anyone can even try to deceive the German people as to what has happened. And as a matter of fact, we ourselves will see to it that this time they are not deceived.